In the last video, we began introducing uh, Einstein's treatment of the interaction of atoms with thermal radiation. We assumed three main processes uh, in this system, absorption of radiation by uh, a two-state system with a ground state ket A and an excited state ket B uh, with a rate that depends on the energy density of the radiation, the number of atoms that can absorb, and some, uh, some coefficient B, A, B that we would like to determine. The system can also undergo stimulated emission where the atoms in the excited state can be induced to radiate uh, a photon and decay to the ground state, which again depends on the energy density of the radiation field, the number of atoms that can undergo this process, and some constant B, B, A. We also postulated a third process, spontaneous emission, which in which uh, in the absence of the radiation field, atoms in the excited state can decay to the ground state with some rate that depends on the number of photon, the number of atoms in the excited state and some constant A. In this video, we're going to uh, develop the conditions under which uh, this two-state system will reach equilibrium with the thermal radiation field. And to do that, we're, look, we're, we're looking at uh, the rate of change of the number of atoms, uh, for example, in the excited state, for which in equilibrium, this rate of change has to be equal to zero. Notice that this doesn't mean that there's nothing happening in the system. Atoms will continue to be excited and uh, they will continue to transition between the two states, but the rate of transitioning from A to B is balanced by the rate of transition from B to A. So what this is equal to is the rate of absorption minus the rate of emission. Okay, so uh, the rate of absorption is given by this quantity over here. This in general depends on time. The rate of emission, there's two processes stimulated emission and spontaneous emission. Stimulated, the rate of stimulated emission is BBA and B omega, and the rate of spontaneous emission is A and B T. And uh, this has to be equal to zero under equilibrium. We are going to massage this expression a little bit to put it in a form that will be useful to us. So we're going to factor out uh, an NB and bring this term over to the other side. We can also factor out the energy density of the thermal radiation. And that's what we have over here. And we have this constant A on the other side. We can factor out the constant BAB. and bring it over to the other side and end up with this expression. Finally, we can isolate for the energy density of thermal radiation by bringing this term over to the right-hand side.
And I'm just going to drop the T's for now. And we, and we end up with this expression. To be able to determine what this quantity is, Na over Nb, we need to use a concept from statistical mechanics, which says that uh, at thermal equilibrium, uh, the distribution of particles with energy E is given by what's known as the Boltzmann distribution. The Boltzmann distribution says that the number of uh, atoms in this case that you can expect uh, with an energy E goes as E to the minus E over KBT. KB is a Boltzmann constant, it's just a numerical constant, and T is the temperature of your system. So this lets us describe a, uh, a quantity to Na and Nb, because we know this has an energy Ea and this has an energy Eb. And this is equal to uh, E H bar omega B A K B T. Since for our two state system, we had to find this energy difference as H B A. So this is E B minus E A. Okay, so plugging that back into our expression for the energy density of the radiation field. Get, we end up with this expression over here. Okay, so this gives us the general form of the energy density for thermal radiation in terms of uh, the constants involved in the rates of absorption, uh, BAB, stimulated emission, BBA, and spontaneous emission, A, as well as the energy difference of our two-state system. Independent of this, we also know that the energy density for thermal radiation is given by uh, Planck's black body radiation formula, right? This black body radiation is thermal radiation. And this says that, uh, there's no square here. This takes on the following form. Okay, so we have two independent expressions for the energy density of thermal radiation. We have this rigorous result due to Planck 
for black body radiation. And we have this generic form under the conditions of thermal equilibrium between a quantum system that interacts with the radiation field and the energy density of that radiation field. Okay. We can already see that this factor over here will match in the case where the radiation field is in resonance with our two state system. So when omega is equal to omega BA, we can already get this term to match over here. We can also match this term over here. Okay, so what we can do now is match terms. We get that the ratio of uh, stimulated emission and absorption has to equal one. And this we already expected from uh, time dependent perturbation theory, which said that the rates of absorption and stimulated emission were balanced. And we also have that the ratio of A and BAB has to be equal to these constants over here. Or in other words, this a coefficient is related to uh, the rate of absorption. In the in the last video, we derived an expression for this coefficient. This is related to the rate of uh, of absorption. So we know that the rate of absorption has to be equal to the rate of stimulated emission. Uh, this was this rate that we calculated in the previous video divided by the energy density of thermal radiation. This was given by pi three epsilon naught h bar squared times the matrix element of the dipole moment operator squared. Putting this together with this expression here, we get uh, an expression for the rate of spontaneous emission. With through a completely different route than we had tried to do this purely from quantum mechanics. So by considerations of thermal equilibrium uh, and statistical mechanics, we were able to uh, find the conditions for which uh, a two-state system interacting with radiation can reach thermal equilibrium. We had calculated these rates quantum mechanically already. The conditions of thermal equilibrium told us that this also had to be satisfied. Putting that together allowed us to get uh, this rate of spontaneous emission per atom. Okay. And remember this DFI, this is the square modulus of the matrix element of the dipole moment operator between our final and initial state. So with this expression, we can now begin to talk about the lifetime of an excited state. Since we have a rate, we know on average how much time it will take for an atom in the excited state to decay spontaneously back uh, to a lower energy state once the radiation field has been removed. And we can also uh, begin to talk about what's known as selection rules. Uh, 
which tells us about the allowed transitions or the allowed decay routes that uh, an atom can take. And we'll look at that in the next couple of videos.